Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on ketosis. What is ketosis or ketogenic diets? Let's dig in. So off the bat, what is ketosis? So ketosis off the bat is a type of diet that basically allows you to spit out or produce ketones. And ketones are basically the byproduct of, of fatty acid oxidation or the burning of fat. We produce these things called ketones. And these ketones come from the burning of fat and they're byproducts that can be used as fuel. Ketones are like logs in the fire. You get a nice slow steady burn. Sugar, sugar in the fire and our metabolic fire are like twigs or like paper or gasoline. You get ups and downs and so goes your mood and your energy. So ketones, they're coming from a byproduct of fat metabolism and these ketones basically can go to the brain for fuel. They can be used by the body and it's a much more stable source of fuel. So the next question becomes, how do we get our body into a place where we can actually produce these ketones? So ketones and carbohydrates are intimately connected. When we get our carbs somewhere around 20 to 50, again, the more metabolic deranged you are, the more insulin resistance, maybe that's a better word, the more insulin resistant you are, meaning the higher your insulin levels are, the lower you have to get your carbs so you can get your insulin levels low enough. Again, lower carbohydrates, and we're talking lower carbohydrates, the major carbs we'd only be eating when we're on a ketogenic diet are gonna be your non-starchy carbs, like your leafy greens, those kind of things. Lower carbohydrates equal lower insulin in general that will increase our free fatty acids and as a metabolic byproduct, will also increase our ketones and that will also help improve incre uh, increasing or improving our weight loss, which is super, super important. Again, insulin and fat burning are on opposite ends of the scale, right? More fat burning, lower insulin. Less fat burning, higher insulin. Same thing, when we're burning fat, we're also spitting out ketones. Now, ketones that can be burned by our brain, right, for fuel, which is great. Dr. Veach out of Harvard shows um, people that have Alzheimer's basically type three diabetes in the brain, parts of the brain that are now insulin resistant, they can't utilize sugar and glucose for fuel, they're able to tap into ketones. So again, we can get our carbohydrates down to 20 to 50, about 200 calories. We can start spitting out more ketones. Now, the other part to the macronutrient ratio, right? If we're talking about our macros, we got our carbs, our proteins, and our fats, right? These are kind of our macro pyramid here. Right, we have macros and we have micros, carbs, proteins, and fat. So the carbohydrate portion needs to be between 20 to 50, right? 20 if you're more insulin resistant. So we have that down, check. The next part is our fat to protein ratio. Now, people can mess up being on a ketogenic diet by doing too much protein and or typically too much protein without corresponding fat. Where are the, the two major places that people are gonna get a whole bunch of protein without fat? Excessive protein shakes and excessive lean meats, boneless, skinless, chicken breast, rabbit, you know, venison, those kind of things, like very lean cuts of meat. So if you're doing four fat meats, you're gonna be okay because you're at least keeping the protein to fat ratio one to one and ideally two, maybe even three to one. So for every one gram of protein, we're doing at least two to maybe three grams of fat, that's key. So again, instead of doing boneless, skinless chicken breast, we do chicken thighs with skin on. And then maybe we have some non-starchy vegetables with some additional grass-fed butter or coconut oil instead. That's how we get the ratio up to two to three to one. So that's gonna be huge. One issue is when you're doing protein, there's something known as gluco, gluco, neo, genesis. So let's break it down. I got Jimmy Moore's voice in my head, gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis. You gotta watch the video. But gluco, blood glucose, neo, new, genesis, right? Like the first part of the Bible, forming or starting or creating, right? So forming or creating new glucose and it can do it out of protein. Now, some people out there say protein is like carbs when it comes to sugar. No, this is definitely more of a slower burn. That process is cortisol dependent and it's not gonna happen as fast as let's say you're taking some alcohol or soda into your body. So not quite the same thing, but you can still produce some glucose from protein, but much slower burn, much more time released, if you will. So fat to protein ratio, we talked about it. One to four, two to three is kind of our sweet spot. We got it. We talked about protein. Now I'm gonna give you a real life example. So my patients utilize my meal map. We have a list of proteins, fats, and carbs, and we have that general column that we choose from. 
certain foods are highlighted if they're autoimmune or not. Not quite here for this. But again, for that one to four ratio, if I'm doing, I'm 6'2", 220 pounds, right? So let's say myself, I'm at a half a gram, 0.5 grams per pound of body weight. So I'd be about, I'd be about 100, half a gram per pound of body weight. So at 115, let's see, 220, that's 110, 110, so 220. So I went a little bit more. I went 240 grams of fat, 240, right? Because if I'm 220, half of that's 110, 110, right? But I'm doing two grams per pound. So now it's, that becomes 220. So we're gonna go up a little bit higher, 240 if you're following my math. So 240, that's 2,160 calories. Again, if we're doing the protein, that's about 120 grams. So it's about 0.6 grams per pound of body weight, 0.55 to 0.6. So that's about 120 grams. So that's 480 calories, 2160 calories. Let's say I'm doing 50 grams of carbohydrate, that's 200. So this equals about 3,040 calories. And again, I'm 6'2", 220, so for me, that may be okay. I also walk about 10 miles a day. So that's kind of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. You can run that through a chronometer app to really look at your micro and macronutrient breakdown on that too. So that's kind of where I'm at. Now again, what's going into all these things? Whole foods, right? So whole, organic, fresh meats of all different variety, fish, fowl, pork, beef, eggs, etc. What's going in there for fats? coconut oil, grass-fed butter, avocado, nut seeds, etc. And then what's going in there for proteins, again, the same type of fish and meat, those kind of are gonna be full fat, so that'll be fat and protein. And I am doing a little bit of whey and a little bit of pea, and I do also put about 20 grams of collagen in. So I get about one, I'd say about 120 grams of protein on a, on a, a day would probably be a lower level, probably upwards. But that kind of gives you a sample day of my macros and what it looks like from a caloric standpoint. But just know that it's all whole foods. It's all real, real whole foods. Organic, high quality that go and make this. People get caught on the numbers, but you can eat a whole bunch of crap and still have these numbers over here. So whole quality foods that go into that. That's number one. And then number two, don't even worry about the calories. The great thing about ketones is they are appetite suppressing. So it's really, really easy to have our appetite regulated and to lose cravings typically in one to two weeks after being on a ketogenic diet. So that takes about one to two weeks, one to two weeks to decrease our appetite, okay? Decreasing that appetite takes about one to two weeks. So keep that in the back of your head. And then also one other thing, I'll save another video here, but ketosis, right? Keto versus ketoacidosis. What's the difference? Well, ketoacidosis, this is primarily happening in type one diabetics or and or in some cases alcoholics that have severe liver cirrhosis. But ketoacidosis, there's a condition where the body is making no insulin because you're a type one diabetic. Let's say your insulin pump falls out, you fall asleep for 12 hours and you have zero insulin because remember, what's the ratio, right? Insulin increases free fatty acid, which increases ketones. The difference is though, your pancreas and your beta cells are always making insulin, at least a little bit, but when you have type one diabetes, those beta cells have been destroyed by an autoimmune attack, so now you have zero insulin, so now when you have zero insulin, right, it's a seesaw. The faster it goes down, the faster the ketones go up, and when the ketones go up, right, ketoacidosis, these ketones are acidic, so guess what? It drives the pH down, and our body is very, very finicky about our pH, that can throw us into a diabetic coma because it's disrupting a lot of the enzymatic activity in our body. So ketoacidosis, type one diabetes, most people confuse the two, it drives me nuts. I know medical doctors that confuse ketosis and ketoacidosis need to differentiate. This is a disease pathology, primarily with type one diabetics not using enough insulin or the pump falling out and or um, alcoholics too, and ketosis can also be misconstrued too. Because with ketosis, there's two levels of ketosis, right? There's nutritional ketosis, where you're keeping the carbs low, you're spitting out ketones, but you're eating enough food, and then there's ketosis because you're starving yourself, right? Think of the Auschwitz concentration camps, super like, you know, emaciated, they're at the 
ex the extreme end of ketosis. We can do nutritional ketosis because all these whole foods are coming in and essential fatty acids. So we have the nutrition coming in and we're doing the ketones. So think of nutritional ketosis, nutrition's coming in, ketones are going up, right? Keto acidosis, the pH is going down excessively fast because of a lack of insulin because of a type one diabetes pathology. And then think of ketosis via starvation. Think of the concentration camp pictures you can remember back to your history classes. So I hope this gives you some good uh, idea of what ketosis is, how it works, some misconceptions so you guys don't fall prey to it. So when you talk to people who get, say, wow, you're on a ketogenic diet, that's so bad for you. You can say, yeah, you're just confusing it. You're either thinking it has to do with starvation or you're thinking it's ketoacidosis. And maybe you can probe them and see which one they think it is. Hope this gave you some great information. If you're trying to improve your health and you're trying to work on a ketogenic diet but not quite getting over the hump, there are other factors that could be affecting your health and in the body systems and the hormones and the gut. Click down below to get access to consultation scheduling with myself and make sure you subscribe to get more great content coming your way. Thanks a lot. This is Dr. J signing off. Take care.